armpit. Ooh, wait a minute, I got a heat rash there. See that? And it, I don't know. You don't care about my armpit. Dude, we're here to talk about Smallville Season 4, Episode 15. 15 episodes in, and we're finally back to finding the stones. Yes, that only took us, let's see, when was the episode where he switched places with Lionel? And after that, nothing. It's sacred. Yes, welcome back to the Smallville Retrospective. I am Scotty, you are not. And, uh, this episode's kind of bittersweet. I forgot to mention this, but I think it's the second episode that has the dedication to Christopher Reeve. And this is the first time within the show that they address it. Um, because the episode starts with Clark trying to figure out what college to go to. Because, you know, in a boy with superpowers life, college is the most important thing. Uh, and he gets a knock on the door that has a package from Dr. Virgil Swan. And just as that happens, coincidentally on the TV, on the television set, it comes across on the news that Virgil Swan has died. So officially, Dr. Virgil Swan has passed away. Now, I watched this clip from the Top Field podcast last night. I don't know which episode it was, but they, uh, Michael Rosenbaum got uh, Al Goff, one of the showrunners at the time, on the phone to talk about this. Apparently, there was more they wanted to do. So originally... When Bridget Crosby comes in at the beginning of the season, you know, it's Margot Kidder. It was going to be Chris. Going to be Chris Reeve. But he wasn't feeling good at the time they were filming. And then he passed away afterwards. So they, they were going to... They, he was too sick to go to Canada. So they were going to go to New York. And then he passed before they could do anything. So they brought in Margot Kidder. And then Margot Kidder had scheduling conflicts. Because again, the last time we saw her was in that episode where Clark and Lionel switched places and she had that other stone. And they actually address what happened to it. Sort of. What, what happened. They actually kind of address. Uh, my confusion comes from, uh, if I remember, I think I remember correctly who has the stone. Um, maybe he hasn't turned over a leaf. I don't know, but uh, yeah, and then they also talk about that in in, in, inter in when we're talking to Al uh, about Jason, how they actually you know how Jason was absent through some of the episodes because he had actually go film the pilot for Supernatural because David Nutter called up Al Goff and said, "Hey, uh, I like that Jensen Ackles. I want to use him for this pilot I'm doing called Supernatural." And so he ended up doing that. And, of course, that got greenlit. So, you know, maybe, just maybe my little theory about how they had to speed up the story a little bit and turn him heel to do that. Maybe that's, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Clark opens up the package. There's a letter from Virgil Swan telling him that he has to embrace his destiny or is you know that he's kind of tried to shield him from Jarrell, but now he has to kind of embrace him, and he gives him back the key that we saw him have. I think it's season three. We, we saw that he had the key. Still not sure how he got it, but he got it. Or something deep. So they finally get back to Clark, and Clark goes to the cave, and. Uh, Anyway, um, and Jarl tells him, My son, Khaled, you must embrace finding these stones. So this is really where we got our well, 15 episodes. We got like eight episodes left. So we have to start pushing this. Oh, and the greatest news comes at the beginning of the episode. Lois is out of town. Although it doesn't really matter because... Clark's going to be out of town, too. 
uh, yeah, we get the opening credits, and then Jason calls Lana and says he's in Metropolis, but it's clearly nighttime where he is and daytime where she is. And then you hear someone run behind him speaking Chinese. And then when he hangs up, he says good night. He also says he's alone, which I think that is the truth because he I don't think he realizes that Lex is there till afterwards. But like, yeah, he's in China. He says good night, and it confuses her. He's like, have a good night. She's like, night. He messed up. And then it's revealed that Lex is also there because that map, you know, the map that was behind. Okay, so here, I, here comes my frustration with this whole thing. So Lex had this map behind this picture, right? And he had it for a long time. He knew it was there, right? He knew it was there. And never tried anything with it at all. I know that Isabel technically destroyed it or whatever, or took it. But like, still, he knew it was in China. You think uh, he had to save to his computer, right? It just felt like they couldn't have them go after, do deal with the map thing right away, because it would get destroyed done too quick. So we had to spread it out again. No, this is like eight episode series, like they do now season, excuse me, like you do now, probably be pretty quick done, but, you know, however they are, uh, really found by Chinese security, which we later find out are working for Lex, or are they, because they even turn on Lex, saying that there's somebody with greater money than him, and I'm confused at this, because he seems to think, Lex, for some reason, seems to think it's Lionel, Lionel, last I checked, Lionel's living in the pool house, right? Or the... You know what I mean. The guest house. He has no money, right? His, his assets were liquidated. He has no money. How's it him? And then, it could be Genevieve, you know, Jason's mom, but why would she torture her own son if they're secretly working together Let we find out? I don't know. It's confusing. It's implied it's Lionel? I don't know. Meanwhile, Lana figures out something when she goes to see Lionel, and Lionel just straight up tells her, hey, they're in China, and gives her a copy of the map. And so she decides she's going to China, and Clark says, well, I'm going with you. And uh, she has, like, the most confused look on her face. She's like, yes, he goes to China uh, with her, and uh, they meet... That they have instructions to get there when they get there to go for a green rooster. Where's this woman who really doesn't have much of a role? She's there, and then when they get to the te temple, the security guards, uh, um, so when they get to the temple, Clark uses this x ray vision. To look through and find the thing. And so while uh, Lana and the other lady go search for something else. Uh, to go search other places for it, I guess I should say. He breaks into it, but there's a kryptonite security system which knocks him down. And it's, it's these cases that you're going to see going forward. That they have to do that or the episode will be over too quickly. He f Again, though... It turns out the stone is not in there. So I don't understand what that is doing. Are you supposed to read it? You're not supposed to? Be? I don't know. And John has a good question at the end of the episode when he says, uh, if the stones were meant for you, then why are there kryptonite guarding it? That's a good question. Hummy, don't bring Ray Ray back in here, okay? Why not, hummy? I'm just trying to help you out, cuz. Oh, God, he's back. Sorry about that, cuz. I'm just trying to help you out, honey. Okay, enough with that. But anyway, <clears throat> we got just. Unless I hate that character, I do like to bring him up in videos. I? It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been forever, cuz. But the order you. What am I doing? 
Anyway. <laughs> Leave myself that. Give me a second. Okay. So, I want to point out that I recognized one of the, the leader of these Chinese people, Captain, Captain Cheng, I think his name is. It's Byron Mann, who not only was also in another episode of Smallville, Insurgents, in season two, he was also Ryu in the Street Fighter movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme. I was like, it looks familiar. How do I know him? And I didn't even look it up. I just kept looking at him like, is that Byron Mann? And then I looked it up. It is Byron Mann. Yes. He does a Hadouken without saying Hadouken. Da! That's what he does. Like, da! He does it without saying Hadouken. He just, da! You know. But yeah, he's the leader of the captain. They're working for Lex, and then they're working for someone else. Because Lex also has to be in peril. And then they, they're they hiding out in the temple with the other two as prisoners. And they find Lana and the other chick. They kill the other chick because she's not needed anymore. And then they, I thought it was going to be revealed that she's in on it too. But no, she's dead. They kidnap Lana. And they do the electrocution thing where they take a... They have a, like a, what do you call those things? Jumper cable hooked up to the thing. And then they dip a sponge in the water, turn it on, and then do it that way. I was trying to be a weird way to electrocute somebody. Like, like sponge up. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just, it, I don't know. It's just, it's weird. And then they, you know, they didn't get any answers out of Jason. They tried to torture uh, Lex. Nothing. And so they decide to torture Lana. But when they do that, Isabel pops out, casts a spell, and knocks everyone out. By the way, Lex had just accepted that Isabel is a thing. I know he was magically piano he had magic magically told to play pianos, but yeah, they just sort of he just sort of goes with it. It is not confused at all as what's going on. I see I was like, why isn't he con oh, oh yeah, that's right, the piano thing. But, like, she breaks out, and she's like, oh, you didn't see what was in front of your eyes. So she figured out what it was. And then, well, Lex, er, so we have to have uh, security guard ex machina to get, I remember the right, right this, I'm like, oh, how does Clark get saved? How does he get, well, two security guards find him, and then drag him out of there. And he gets his powers back and then pushes them off. And we get, it's not a Wilhelm scream, but it's actually, ah, it's what we get. Ah, or whatever. That made me laugh. But, yeah. Usually when he throws them off, there's no noise. But clearly, taking from Kung Fu movies, he got flung and he's like, ah, you know. But, uh, yeah, and then he saves Lex and uh, Jason. And they go to look at the thing. Which Clark can't get into because of the people like, Clark, don't you want to check this out? And he's like, kind of standing there. And he's like, well, wait, well, what if it isn't, um, maybe the map's not to the thing, but like, there's a map of it. Maybe like the tree, maybe it's hidden under the tree. And sure enough, to find like a little dragon. She finds like a little dragon statue underneath. It has a stone. It's the bottom, it's the, it's a pointy stone. And uh, then we go Matrix. Because uh, first Lana, or Isabel, kicks Clark's ass. But then Clark fights her. She grabs a sword and a sigh and goes after her him. Throws the sigh. And of course, Clark never thinks it's actually going to hurt him. So he just kind of stands there. <coughs> it's magically charged. We see the purple light gone and or whatever pulls it out and have a little bit of a fight there's some wire work pretty good wire work i'm pretty sure it was the stunt double though not actually christian croig but uh yeah some pretty good wire work uh but uh eventually they both grab the stone which causes the magic to go and knock them both out and jason finds lana then lex comes in his shirt still torn open button that thing up or is it maybe it's ripped i don't know but like he's like where's the, he didn't ask if anyone's okay he's like where's the stone did you find the stone 
And then Clyde goes over and is like, oh, it's, it's gone. And at first I'm like, I'm trying to remember, did Clark take it? No, he did not. I'm like, obviously they want us to think that Jason took it. And it's obvious, that it's like, well, he was the first one there. The other two were out and Lex wasn't there yet. So maybe he has it. It's revealed that he does have it as he gives it to Lana, which does come into handy later. But yeah. And by the way, it just cuts to Clark's loft back in Smallville. They say he's avoiding his parents so he doesn't get yelled at. Uh, uh, Ian and Lana are talking in the loft and everything. And uh, then we get some final dialogue when he does finally go inside the house. Uh, that, um, well, uh, that he got an email from Dr. Swan before he died saying that, uh, Bridget Crosby was going to give him the only stone they had, but she's disappeared. She can't find any, he can't find any proof of her existence anywhere. And like I said, I seem to remember Lionel having this stone. Which is confusing. It's it's clear they wanted to do more with Bridget Crosby. But like I said, the scheduling with Margot Kidder. She lives in Indiana. And the schedule go to Canada and all that stuff. Yeah, it it, it didn't didn't work out. But uh yeah. Um no work out the way they wanted it to. So it just, they had to I think it, it does uh, spoilers if this is true, I think it's revealed that she's deed. I think. But uh I don't know yet. Um Yeah, 'cause it it seemed like Bridget Crosby was gonna be a kind of a major player, recurring player, and then she just disappeared. We saw she had the stone, so something we still don't know who picked up Lionel, and if we're going from the, if Lionel has the stone, then I can imagine that she was the one who picked him up. But I think when they find her body, it's insinuated it was Genevieve that killed her. She doesn't have the stone. Maybe she gave the stone to Lionel to watch over. Interesting. So the last time we see Bridget Crosby is when the J.P. Mano gets in her uh, limo and gives her the stone. So, yeah. I don't know. But I like this episode. Some people might not. I There's people who don't like this whole storyline with the stones and Lana and the magic. I think this was the best episode surrounding that. I think it, I think it works. Like, she's not... Isabel the entire episode just for a small part of the episode and I think that works and I liked how they're in China even though if you really pay attention when they're in the China thing it's just the smallville town square that they use it's just that redecorated to look like China because I saw them there walking they're standing there and you see that long shot and I'm like that's just the town square decorated like China but yeah, uh, I think it's, it's a pretty good episode. So, uh, what are your thoughts on this episode in the comments? Make sure like, share, and subscribe. I'm gonna try to get as many as I can done, not just four. I'm gonna try to do six because I got started early. You can tell, uh, it's before noon. It's uh, about eleven forty-five at this point in the recording. So, um, yeah. So thank you for watching. I'm Sky, and I'll see you in the next one.